Good evening, everyone. Hey, wait, where are you guys going? Bathroom. Okay. They'll be back. That's cool. You're not going to miss much. Um, I am Jason Liebrecht. Welcome to my get to know Jason Liebrecht, or is it meet? Meet me. You get to meet me here. M-E-E-T, M-E-E-T, Lost Demon. Uh, anyway, I'm Jason Liebrecht. It's nice to see you all. Thanks for coming. I guess, um, I mean, do I need to tell you some stuff or maybe? Yes. Well, I'm a, I'm a voice actor um, and an actor in general, and I have been for most of my adult life. Um, I live in Austin, Texas. I have a seven and a half year old son named El Cid Gonzalo, after the Spanish hero. Um, I uh, ride a motorcycle and I drive a car. Because sometimes, you know, you can't, very much, you can't put very much stuff inside a motorcycle. Um, let me think, what else? I have a nice house on the market, if anybody's in the market for a house in East Austin. It's kind of a pricey zip code, but, you know, it's the only investment I've ever made in my life. In any case, you might know me from, recently, from such roles as Yato in Origami. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Millennium Earl and Lobby in D. Grayman. Um, Heath in... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm going to mention Heath. My bro. My bro. Prince of Stride. Prince of Stride. Alternative. Thank you very much, Elizabeth Maxwell. That's Elizabeth Maxwell, by the way. She's my guest at this convention. In any case, um... And I've got a lot of other credits as well, more than the dude at the opening ceremony mentioned, but most of you weren't there anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and it's Principal Ench, in case anybody was misled by that. I'll open it up to questions now. I'm very happy to see you all. Yes, sir. Uh, how'd you get your start in voice acting? That is an interesting story. Um, I was at a birthday party at a, uh, at a bar called Club DeVille in Austin, Texas. Club DeVille is now a place called Cheer Up Charlie's. It's a gay bar now. It wasn't a gay bar then. I, I, that's neither here nor there. Um, in any case, I was at a birthday party. I didn't know the birthday boy or girl. Oh, there's a little tonage. Um, and I ended up closing it down with a gentleman named Lowell. Lowell happened to be a director at Monster Island Studios. Monster Island Studios at the time was um, ADV's Austin studio and he was directing a show called Get Backers and he had signed an actor that he auditioned that he found through an agency um, for the first six episodes because that's initially how we would do we'd sign contracts for six episode chunks in any case Lowell was not happy with this actor uh, the guy's audition was way 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 faster than working with him actually turned out to be and, you know, there are production deadlines and stuff like that. And it ended up being a little more work than Lowell had bargained for. So after a while of he and I having shots of tequila and beers and chatting, he said, you know, you got a good voice. And I said, thanks. And he'd seen me perform on stage before. I, I was an actor before that. I, I started when I was a kid. Um, in any case, he asked me to come in Monday morning and see if I could do this stuff. And lo and behold, I could do this stuff. And the rest is history, I suppose. Does that answer your question? Perfect. All right. So the moral of the story is, don't, I mean, do talk to strangers at bars. <laughs> do, if you are of age, have that shot of tequila that they offer you. And do talk, you know, out loud to the person next to you. Anyway, ding, ding, ding. Next question. Yes, Lavi. Um, what, is, what do you consider your most, like, the most entertaining voice that you've done? Like entertaining to the, to, to the kids like, or entertaining to me? Entertaining to you. All right. Um, that, that's a difficult question to answer. I don't know if I have one character that was the most entertaining because they're entertaining on different levels. You know what I mean? Um, wow. We should combine panels, whatever's happening over there. Um, 
In one respect, I would say, uh, hey, slash BK201, slash the Black Reaper from Darker Than Black. Because that's the closest I'm ever going to get to playing Batman. Or hopefully not. I, I say that. Um, but other people who I've been up against are now playing Batman, and it galls me to no end. In any case, uh, so that's one of them. Well, that's a good sound, whatever that is. Is that you? It's probably my text. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as far as funny stuff, Principal Ench was in, in Shin Chan was, was a very, very fun role for me. Um, I got to use a semblance of my father's actual Chilean accent and, you know, say really ridiculous shit that half the time he came up with on the fly and improvised and, you know, talking about Shaquille O'Neal on South Beach at a fucking club, you know, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> And at the same time, he was also a superhero, uh, Inchman. So it was pretty exciting when this mustachioed, spectacle-wearing foreign teacher in the school suddenly was a superhero, you know what I mean? Like, that was pretty entertaining for me, for sure. Um, let me think. There's more than that, for sure. Yato, Yato, that's another one, because he's super schizophrenic, right? It's like he goes from being this super tough dude and then suddenly he's like, ah, ah, yo, yeah, 99 problems and the Yato ain't one. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's my trifecta for the moment. I may change my answer in about five minutes, but for now, you got it. I'm a little schizo too. Not clinically, but you know, in an entertaining way, hopefully. You had your, your hand up too, right? Yeah. What is your favorite anime to watch? Um... Well, I'm going to date myself a little bit. My favorite of all time is still the, well, it's the remastered version of Akira, the movie. Um, and I also have the graphic novels, all ten issues. I received them when I was laid up uh, with a broken leg from a motorcycle accident. Um, that one is the one I've probably seen the most uh, and appeals to me on the most levels and I've read the source material and I don't know, I can identify with several of the main characters and and I know it's just a movie but um, it's a really amazing movie. If you guys haven't seen it, you should see it. Especially you, Maxwell. Uh, she hasn't seen it. In any case, uh, I also was a big fan of Robotech. Yeah. I know I'm dating myself there. Um, and Star Blazers. Um, I am really, really aging myself. You guys are like, this guy is aging before my very eyes. Hey, welcome back. Um, but as far as modern stuff, um, I'm going to sound like an egoist, but Eden of the East is one of my favorite things that I've watched in a long, long time. Um, and Darker Than Black. I watched that one too. They appeal to me on a number of levels. They're not silly. Um, I don't know. That's kind of the... I'm not that into the silly stuff if I'm the viewer. You know, it's fun to do the silly stuff. Uh, Shin Chan was funny to watch. You know, there were a lot of folks in that doing a lot of improvisation and very talented folks. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to cut that answer right there. That's it. Ding dong. Anybody else have a question? Yes. Okay, for video games, uh, like, what is your favorite character that you, you voice in video games? Oh, Mordecai, hands down. Yes! <laughs> I mean, come on. He's got a bird of prey. He's a drunk. He's got a sniper rifle. Oh, shit. It's not the like, right? <laughs> these are like, you know, these are hitting on all levels. Am I, am I right? You know, come on. I want a bird of prey. Who doesn't want a freaking bird of prey? Yeah, yeah. Me too, me too. We could all get into falconry. Wouldn't that be badass? <laughs> Can you imagine that shit? You take their hood off and you're like, go get that thing. And they fucking go get it. Or, or even better, like you've got some enemy. Go fuck him up. And they go do it. Anyway. Would you at least kill like, a handsome Jack if you had the chance? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Yeah. He's already dead in my mind. <laughs> he should be dead. Handsome Jack. He's not even that handsome. Handsome? Give me a break. That's relative. <laughs> He's maybe handsome to you know, some older fellas. Hey, oh. I'm nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, you, you, don't, you go your own way, right? 
What's wrong with that? Anybody else have a question? <laughs> yes, sir, Mario. Uh, which anime role was the hardest for you to get into? Finian. Finian was the hardest for me to get into. Uh, Finian, some of you have probably already heard this story, and I'm sure Ian Sinclair is tired of me telling this story. But uh, Colleen Quinkabeard cast me in that role, and I did not audition for that role. Um, but at the time, I was one of the few dudes in front of me. In, in, in those days, they were letting dudes who could do higher pitch voices, and I can do that still, and I'm not going to do it now. Um, but, you know, you get now, usually it's women who play younger boys or younger characters like that, and he has a really high pitched voice, right? Um, anyway, my first session was not with Colleen, it was with Ian Sinclair. It was one of his, it may have been his first directing gig. It's our first session together. We hadn't met yet. He'd only heard about me and he'd seen some of my work. He was brand new. I mean, he was a, an accomplished actor, but uh, he had just started doing the anime thing. And we go in for our first session, and we do, I think, three hours of Finian. And I say, hey, can we stop for a minute and talk? And he's like, what? And I, I say, we need to have a little meeting. And I leave the booth and we powwow with he and the engineer, Kevin was his name, just like my pumpkin. Um, that's actually true. And he's a white pumpkin, his name is Kevin. Uh, in any case, I tell them that I can't sustain the, the, the pitch that I have been using for the past three hours and that I feel like we need to do it all again. And he's got a deadline and he kind of looks at me like, what, is this some sort of hazing? <laughs> like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. Like, we gotta do this for a whole series, right? And then maybe subsequent seasons and OVAs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I, 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 I gotta be able to do it, you know, for the whole time. And the way that I work, because I'm based in Austin, is I go in and I, you know, I, I'll, I'll do VO for seven hours in a day, and sometimes longer if I've gotta do some night work too. So I gotta be able to sustain the voice. In any case, we went and we had a couple beers, took a break, came back, and redid it all, super fast. Chasing all the reacts. Do right, you guys know what that means? No. Hmm. Well, for me, what it means is you do it at the same time as the preview Japanese actor is showing it to you. You know, like, you see what the, because the writers told you what it's gonna be. Like, it's a, you know, it's some sort of, <gasps> or a, <gasps> or whatever the hell it is, right? And it explains what it is, and odd react. First time I went in, I was like, what's a web react? Anyway. Um, <laughs> So you chase all those. Uh, if it's a mouth not shown cue, you do. You chase all those too. You just do them as you're watching the preview, and then the engineer checks. He's like, "Yeah, it fits." So we got it done. We got it done in the same amount of time, and the rest again is history. Um, but Fenian was tough. I had a, I had, I had an issue with his barrettes. I got a little like, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm the first generation of a. Chilean German family. My dad's from you know the very southern tip of South America, and he's a macho dude, um, or he was. He's a sweetheart now, but he's in his seventies. In any case, the barrettes were a thing for me. It was tough, like, and if Poppy saw those damn barrettes, be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is you, Jace. The fuck. <laughs> anyway, salt and pepper of the language. That's what my dad always said. He's a big cursor. I guess I answered that question. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Oh, come on, I'm sure you got some questions. You don't have to ask me about my work either, you can ask about anything. I may or may not answer you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and thank you for, I mean, because what were we gonna do? It's like an hour, we got, <laughs> time is it? I mean. Uh, I asked Alexis Tipton this, I want to get your opinion. Uh, how healthy you think the anime industry is? You know, because of piracy and bad economy, a lot of companies went out of business. But how do you think it's doing right now, though? I honestly think that they're hitting a, a new stride um, with uh, the crunchy role development for Funimation and also the broadcast up thing. Um, it's bigger than ever. Uh, Funimation has become a freaking factory. I don't know if you were at our last panel, but we record from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m every freaking weekday, and now they're open to doing weekends as well. I mean, we got deadlines. Every week, stuff is being put on the air. And uh, we're right behind the Japanese airings of things. Um, I, I dare to say it's, it's, it's healthier than it's been in a long time. 
I also think the market is bigger than it's been in a long time. There are more conventions than there ever were when I started this. I mean, by a long shot. Anyway, that's my opinion. I could be... No, I don't think I'm a bit wrong, but I could be. I've been wrong before. Anyway, that's what I think. Did she agree? Yes. Yes. Well, good. Because if she didn't... I don't even know. Anybody else have a question? Yes. Um, do you have a role, uh, other than obviously you said Batman, that you would really like to play sometime in the future, or a specific type of role? Yes, Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I still have a hard time watching them. I mean, I love that movie, but I have a hard time watching it. He did a great job. Um, and good for him. Really, really good for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good job. You don't need another personality. You may still have to jump. It's true. It's true. It's true. I, I could do it. I could get in that. I mean, yeah, yeah, I could do it. <laughs> I could totally do it. Um, there are probably others, but that's the one that comes to mind very quickly, obviously. Anyway, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Looking at you. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, yes, Mario, what would you like to know? Marvel or DC? Ooh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it depends on the character. Totally. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing some mashups. Anyway. Um, I don't know. Wolverine versus Batman? No, I don't think it's a fair matchup. No? No. Not even in his like in his freaking armor suit? Well, Not the one from Superman versus Batman no, either. I'm no, talking about the one from the Dark Knight series, the one where he fought the mutant leader. Yeah, that one. That one. That suit and that tank against Wolverine. Oh, Wolverine's fucking. I mean, he's gonna come back, but he, he pound him in the dirt though, man. I think the best thing Batman can do to him is freeze him, put him on ice, and then like cryo freeze him perfectly. That's true, but he's also a scientist. Yeah, which means that he could probably get rid of the mutant gene. gene he could get rid of the mutant gene or, or turn those freaking, those adamantium additions or bones or claws or into... Or magnet. Yeah, or, or whatever, like like a big magnet gun. You know, what did Magneto do to freaking Wolverine? I mean, I like, well, I mean, I'm not dissing Wolverine. I'm a big fan of Wolverine, too. Wolverine's super cool, and I would love to have claws that popped out of my freaking hands that would be really, really useful in Dallas traffic. <laughs> Especially the three configuration, being able to give somebody the, the middle blade finger. Oh, yeah. Like, that's just very special. And I even like the fact that they cause him pain when they come out. Like, you need to know that you're using this thing. Like, this needs, there needs to be a cost to this sort of power, right? A reckoning. It's gotta hurt you too. That's what I think, anyway. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Yes. Going off of that, what kind of superpower would you like to have? Ooh. Hmm. Uh, I want to be able to manipulate time. I think I could mess up more shit that way than any other way. <laughs> I mean, super strength is great. Flight? Flight. Who wouldn't like to fly, right? But you, if you're able to manipulate time, you can kind of do anything. You know? Anyway. And think about the resources you could amass. I mean, you know, illegally, technically, I guess. I mean, is that insider trading? I don't know. You could get that Deadpool role. I could get that Deadpool role, that's right. I mean, what if Ryan Reynolds just didn't exist? What if he was never fucking born? What about that? Who are they going to get to talk to the fucking motor mouth? I mean, who's going to do it then? I mean, ah, right? Ah. Okay, take it easy. Are you sure you're not salty? What's that? Are you sure you're not salty? Salty? <laughs> Is that what you're asking? If I'm salty? <laughs> Does anybody else have a question? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, this is going very good. Have you ever thought of even portraying a villain character in an, any anime or game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which one would it be? Which one would I like to play? Yes. 
Oh, dude. Um, hmm. That's a good question. That, that, that doesn't come straight to my head immediately. Um, wow, there's so many good ones. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think on that one. Okay. Silently to myself. <laughs> so just give me five minutes. Do you guys like to hear a song? I'm just <laughs> I'm joking. Um, shit, that is a really good question. Uh, wow. Has to be a comic book or video game or anime. Anything you want. Huh, wow. I, uh, I like Hannibal Lecter a lot. <laughs> um, especially in the series, actually. I mean, Anthony Hopkins did an excellent job, clearly. But uh, that, that actor, who, I don't even know where he's from. That crazy accent. Have you guys seen the series at all? Hannibal? It's a pretty creepy series. It's slow moving. But there's some excellent cookery happening as well. <laughs> Although you don't always know what the protein is. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's true, though. I mean, I know it's, it's a bad joke, but it's true. I mean, it looks delicious. I mean, even if it is somebody's spleen, it looks delicious. Like, I don't want to eat a fucking spleen, but I might eat it if you put it like that with some chipoline onions and a freaking nice Pinot Noir reduction and some freaking grass-fed butter sauce with fresh garlic. I mean, come on. A little fried sage. You'd try it, too. <laughs> There's got to be a bad hero, villain. Uh, I'm, I'm going to continue to think about that. Does anybody else have a question in the meantime? In the mean, yes, you back there. Hi, um, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm sorry if I missed it at the beginning of the panel. Um, were you excited to come back to the role of Lobby? Yeah. Because you're the first time you've ever been on the show. Yes, I was. Of course I was. I wish he were more in it, though. Know, what the hell, right? Like, it's suddenly the freaking Todd Abercorn show. Come on. What the fuck? That dude doesn't talk enough and shit? Right? I mean, he's good. I get it. A lot of people are good. Uh, yes, of course. I do wish he talked more. I was also excited about Millennium Earl. Yes. That is the one I've gotten the most flack about, by the way. Really? Yeah. No, I get, I get kids commenting on Twitter like, hey, why do you sound like that? I'm like, well, and I'll answer a couple times, and then I'm like, you know, I don't think that we, you need to follow me anymore, dude. <laughs> like, uh, I sound like that because I made a choice and they hired me for the job. And then I did it. He's like, well, why don't you sound like to sue you? I'm like, again, because I made a choice, because I'm an actor, and this is not the Japanese version, this is the dub version. So guess what, it's a different thing entirely. It's like people who get pissed off because Game of Thrones has veered from the fucking books. Guess what? It's a different thing now, right? It's past them. Anyway, don't get me started. Don't even get me started. <laughs> Was that a question that double hand raised? No? She's hiding back there. Yes? What do you mean, like, uh, this sort of thing, like... <laughs> Fucking Walker. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, you, sir. And there is Michael, huh? Is it Michael? Yes, What's up, Michael? Not much. Zara of the God question. Yeah, question got asked or not? How did it feel coming back to Abel from Street Fighter? And what's the character you'd like to see come back that you haven't done in a while? Uh, well, man. <laughs> I would love to come back to do Abel. Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we won. <laughs> For now. I'm gonna need your help if this continues to happen. Um, yeah, man, I'd love to, are you kidding me? The Frenchman with no French accent? I auditioned with a freaking French accent, by the way. Um, that still kind of calls me. They're like, no, a little less. I mean, how about just like a European lilt? Well, uh, even less. And talk slower. Like, dude, do you want me to act at all? Why don't you just send me a memo and tell me what I'm supposed to do? Like, come on. Uh, 
Yes, I'd love for that to come back. What was the second part of the question? Oh man, I, well, I want to I want to do more Mordecai for one thing. I know there's probably another Borderlands in the works, and I sincerely hope that he's in it. Um, and I think it would be a travesty if he weren't in it. And I think people need to, you know, like scream at them about this via all forms of media. Um, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, and also, what I know. This is probably gonna happen, or hopefully it's gonna happen, but I'd love to see Yato come back, man. I mean, there's so much cool shit that happens in, in both in the source material, in the OVAs. Like, man, we need to license some more of this stuff because it gets pretty freaking interesting. I think. <laughs> Here's my question. What do you think is going on over there? We're gonna find out. I know what's going on over there. Like mow them down, like no problem. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I just wanted to see what we were up against. You know? In the event of the zombie apocalypse, they will be our fucking dinner. <laughs> There's your sweet. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, sorry, that was really freaking st stupid, crazy. Does anybody else have a question? Yes. Can you sing for us? <laughs> uh, what would you like me to sing? Anything you like. Um, y y y yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> what about your question, young lady? Have you ever been part of like, any pranks at work? Or have you been like pranked on from your fellow coworkers? Uh, yeah, kind of. We, we do this dumb thing in the, uh, in the Funimation realm where we leave bombs for each other so like instead of I don't know Micah had one for me it was pretty mild in this most recent thing we're recording on that I can't mention um, where he was supposed to say something about my character's soccer playing abilities and instead he said something about me having a nice ass or something like that <laughs> and it's in the midst of me you know trying to act and go through in that particular show I, I'm working with Jerry Jewell and Jerry lets me do like a page at a time so it's you know like I'm in the flow I'm in the moment and you really feel like you're acting when you do it that way some directors want you to take one cue and really work on that one cue but Jerry doesn't work that way he likes to get you know get your actor blood flowing and get you in the zone and get it going and so then i get this like bomb about him liking my ass and the deal is he's trying to we're trying to screw with each other i don't tend to pick up on the bombs though like i don't i don't like i didn't really even realize it wasn't in the script i'm just like thinking like oh he thinks my character has a nice ass but in fact that's not what he was you know that that wasn't part of the story turns out we're not Secretly gonna be lovers later. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> a little bit. He's very cute. And vocally, he's really cute, right? Anyway, I have an affinity for that young man. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, do the like directors or like engineers ever mess with you too? Not just uh, the actors. Yes. Yes. Um, Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. In both cases. I'm trying to think of specific examples. Mike McFarland's pretty good at messing with me. Um, he has fucked with me pretty hard before. And then we got engineers that like to throw in these bombs as well. Like, I don't know. But again, I don't, I don't notice them as well. Michael just do silly stuff to me right before I'm supposed to do something serious, and so it makes it difficult to continue, where I'm like, yeah, I know that sounds like a good director, right? Take him out of the moment, right before the moment. <laughs> but it's all in good fun, and we've been working together for a number of years, so it does kind of take, not that it gets monotonous, but it, 
alleviates whatever monotony we've kind of developed over the years of doing this. And again, I feel very lucky and grateful to do what I do, so I'm not complaining at all. But it is nice for things to be different every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? Yes, madam? Um, so, my son is obsessed with the Ghostbusters video game, and I'm looking down the credits, and I see you, and it's, uh, you know, un whatever it is, miscellaneous voices. What are the miscellaneous voices? Because I've tried to pick you up, and I'm like, ah. Well, it's going to be difficult, because I'm like, wraithy ghosts, and like, you know, like, guys set on fire, and... I don't know. That dude shredded me. It is a, I, I can't remember what the director's name is, and I'm not sure if he's still in Dallas, but, but this dude had a reputation for if you went in for him and you did one of those sessions where you were basically like multi-voice pickup guy, uh, his, he wanted to hear your throat bleed. So if you hear somebody that sounds like they're hurting themselves, it's a good chance it's me. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so, I have two real simple questions. Yeah. How's your day been? And have you been enjoying the convention so far? Uh, my day has been pretty awesome. And yes, absolutely. You, you folks are great. Um, I like being in the district. And I realize that when you're in the district, like, most folks aren't actually from the district. Like, you guys have come from all over. Like, where are you from, sir? Uh, I'm nearby in uh, Arlington. Arlington, Virginia. And I've, you know, I had folks from Philly, right? Philly? Yeah. Um, yeah, D.C. Is, is an interesting place. Like, is it, the, is it the, the top of the south or the bottom of the north? <laughs> we are in the middle. Yeah, right, but, but which of those are you? Are I swore like, I wouldn't talk about this in a panel, but I, uh, I am curious. It's the middle it's of the south or the middle north? It's, it's both. Yeah. And Think about it like a soccer team. You know that like, little We're center right? that just like yeah. everybody is? Yeah. But I bet everybody's got different opinions. I mean, I bet some people are like, no, we're the South. We're totally the South. And some people are like, no, we are totally the North. Yeah, this is an argument that actually has happened a lot. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, it's a cool city, honestly. Yes, Luffy. As Rob Lucci, you got a pet bird named Hattori. That's and correct. Lucci would do the voice for him. Can you do that voice? That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't say much. Occasionally, I get a weird one where he's like, doubtful call, like, <laughs> or whatever. Like, you gotta like communicate crap, but it's always that thing, like, <laughs> I don't know. But mainly, it's that that one. That's anyway. I am aping the seiyu in that particular instance, um, and he did a great job, I think. <laughs> you think it's a separate guy? No, 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 I'm saying, like, is it a different actor? Like, is there an actor, is there a seiyu in Japan that just voices the, the bird? I think it's the same actor. You think it's the Lucci actor? So it's just like they did, we did it? Yes. All right. Because I've always been curious about this. Like, is there a dude that's getting paid just to do those? Never asked. No, no. I, I feel like you're the best musician to ask. You are right, man. Mark, you, you, I should ask these questions. <laughs> I shouldn't wait till I'm on a panel and be like, hey, you folks that don't do this, uh, what do you think the answer to this is? I mean, I'm, I am interested in your answers. Yes, sir, you again. Bring your own pad and pencil. Just whenever you wind up having questions at a panel, there you go. You just write it down. Yeah. You know, weeks later when you're, you know, no longer at a convention thinking about it at all, you pull out a notepad. Oh yeah, I had questions. I thought you were gonna say three weeks later when you sobered up. <laughs> no, I mean, I figured it was best like that. Was that's, that's fair. That's fair. I am not drunk. Okay. Um, anyway. I play a drunk character a lot. And you know, you gotta, you gotta figure out what that's like. If you're method. Yes. So, have you ever gotten into a fight? Did you win that fight? Uh, yes, and yes, and no, and yes. <laughs> and yes, and no, and yes, and yes, and yes. Mostly. Mostly. But I have gotten my ass kicked. Doesn't happen often. And I tell you what, that motherfucker's still feeling it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How's like being a shadow warrior? Oh, man. Awesome. 
um, that's one of my that's one of my favorite things I've done recently, and I can't wait to be able to play that game. They have a chainsaw katana. You can dual wield and have a chainsaw katana. Like, what? Really? <laughs> right? I want to cut things in half with a freaking chainsaw katana. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. Although, it's a little weird that I'm voicing an Asian character, I guess. I, um, they, uh, they're trying to be careful with how racist it's perceived, I guess. But the original Source game is was legitimately racist. So I think now we're kind of doing this cross between Bruce Lee and, uh, oh, what's the, what's the actor's name who's on the Hangover movies? Uh, the Doctor. Like, Squala, City of, City of, what, what is it, Hala, City of Squala? What's that guy's name? He's a doctor, isn't he? Like, in real life, I think he's a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that's really his penis? <laughs> <laughs> that little tiny, like, mushroom thing? That can't be his penis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know either. Something to think on. Maybe this is something I should write down. <laughs> What's that? I don't think that I'm going to ask him that if I remember. always ask, like, his executives. You know what? I would ask him that. I would ask him that. Because I'm an idiot like that. That, that, that. That's a great idea. Was that your real penis? And he'll know what I'm talking about. No, I have a history of putting my, put my mouth with celebrities, for sure. I've got some pretty, pretty great stories. Um... Share one. What's okay, uh, um, Ethan Hawke, for instance. Uh, I was in this uh, this movie that Richard Linklater directed that was rotoscope. You guys know what rotoscoping is? Yeah. So it's animated on top of the filming, right? And uh, frame by frame, they go and they paint it all with this, this core of artists that they've hired. In any case, he's in that movie, too, in these scenes with Julie Delpy, lovely actress. And um, Richard Linklater is a local director. He's known me since I was a kid. And has put me in a few of his things. Never a very big part. Dick. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. He and I are friends. Uh, he comes to my plays and stuff. He's a nice guy. In any case, I was living in New York at the time, and they had the Waking Life premiere, right? And so he invited me to the premiere. And I think I was in a show at the time, too. So he and um, Ethan Hawke and a couple of other people came to see my play off Broadway. And we went out to dinner that night, and that night I was very well behaved, and we got along great. And then I went to the premiere. And there was a, an after party. There was an open bar at the after party. And um, I already knew, Rick had already told me that we were going to take a limo out after, after the after party and just drive around and drink and, and have fun and party. And I knew that Ethan was going to be in that too. Um, anyway, in the course of the party, I got a little too drunk. And uh, what was the movie that came, had just come out with, with he and Denzel Washington? Um, where Denzel Washington is the, is the crooked cop. Training Day. Training Day had just come out. And it did not get raves. It got a lot of bad reviews. Not of Denzel Washington's performance, but of Ethan Hawke's performance. Especially Time Out New York, which I was an avid reader of at the time. Anyway, so with a bunch of drinks in me, and Ethan's not a very big guy. I'm not a very big guy either, but I'm bigger than him. Um, and the only reason that that's pertinent to the story is that at some point in the party, I came up to him and... He's talking to some other people. He's like, hey, Jason, what's up? And I, like, kind of leaned on his shoulder, like, my head over his head, and said, man, I'm so sorry they keep calling you a pussy in all the fucking press. Like, time out, man. It sucks. And he kind of looked at me like, what the fuck? Now i got to hang out with this dude for the rest of the night? He did not look at me for the rest of that. I mean, I felt like an idiot immediately. Anyway, so hopefully I don't do that with Dr. Ken or whatever his name is. <laughs> like, so sorry about your tiny dick, dude. <laughs> anyway, this has gone off the rails. <laughs> but it's fun that way, isn't it? Yes. Anyway, yes, yes, sir, you, you in the back again, you had it up first. Right, so. <laughs> right, oh, that's so that's pretty nasty, right? As, he as, had it up first. So it's as, a race. As a follow up. Does it matter what size it is if he's a doctor? If he's a doctor, if he's a doctor, he understands you know physiology and he knows the parts pretty damn well, right? But he's not a gyno. Good question. Hold on. 
<laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Number five. Number five. You know about that? What about it? What are you talking about? The interview? No. Right? No? That wasn't you, right? The awkward interview thing on YouTube? No. <laughs> But did tell us about it. It was two voice actors, and like they were just they were purposely doing like awkward, um, like like interview questions, like in front of a camera. And um, one of the guys would like say, like you know, uh, number one, what is your favorite thing, this or that? And uh, he'd pass it over to the other guy, and the guy would just be like, can you uh, repeat that in five or less questions, like. What is your character? And then it'd go back to him and he'd just be like... Am I in this? I thought, I thought it was you. I think it, it might be... I don't think I'm in this, man. <laughs> if I am, then, uh... Whoa. <laughs> uh, then I got, a, I got more of a problem than I realized. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll have to look that up, too. <laughs> <laughs> Can anybody else have a question? <laughs> yes, Mario. Uh, so I noticed you share. What is your least favorite Star Wars film, and what is your most favorite Star Wars film? Um, my most favorite is Empire Strikes Back. Yes. My least favorite is Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, which Mario are you? Builder Mario. Okay. Uh, Super Mario Maker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the system no one bought. <laughs> no, my son is way into it, man. Oh, okay. He, he makes, he loves making levels that I can't freaking defeat. <laughs> it's awesome. They've got like invisible walls and invisible ghosts and shit. It's like, dude, what is the point of it if you can't even win? He's like, that's the point, Papa. Because <laughs> I like seeing you squirm. He doesn't say that. He's seven, but you know. Thank anyway. You. Yes, Michael. Well, going to say on video games, what's a game you like to relax and play with while you're chilling? No Man's Sky recently. Yes. Um, I find that thing to be... <laughs> what's happening back there? <laughs> Crank some tunes, dude. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I find that, that game to be really therapeutically zen. You know what I mean? The sound, the I mean, I know people have complaints, and apparently there are lawsuits that have been filed because it's not truly 30 million worlds or whatever. How, how did somebody even figure this out, first of all? Who has the time for that? But I guess so. You're probably right. Then I'm jealous of them. And um, no, I just find it to be really, really relaxing. I do get sick of having to continue to, to upgrade my ship, but it's very satisfying when I do. Anyway, I ha and I have that Telltale uh, Batman game, but I have not yet opened it because I learned who's in it. <laughs> so that got really d sad. <laughs> it didn't even get dark; it just got sad. It's cool. He's really good. All right. Does somebody have another question to take me off of this track? Yeah. Yes. Yes, Marco. What's your favorite Harry Potter house? Uh, Griffinwood. <laughs> Very valid. Yeah. Okay, so what's it like working from Gearbox? Um, um, in my experience, it was great. I mean, uh, especially with Mordecai, they, they once they got to know me, um, there's a fair amount of improvisation. Was it really difficult to like, like say your line when you're playing Mordecai? No, no, not at all. Um, you know, they let me get in character, and then they're like. Hey, you pr you might have a different way of saying this, and if so, go ahead and do it. And, you know, they don't always use it, but sometimes they do. Um, probably not enough that I deserve some sort of writing credit. And do you have like a favorite line of Mordecai? No, no, I don't. I don't think I have a favorite. I like a. I mean, I like a lot of what he said in that uh, that um, DLC that the. Uh, the D and D DLC, where he yeah, well, the one the the D and D one where they're playing the role playing game and he fucking hates it. 
He's like, fucking, I hate fucking D&D. Jesus. <laughs> that stuff. That stuff is very amusing to me. They're having a they're having a Borderlands discussion right there, <laughs> which who can blame them? It's a good game. It is actually. What's your is your favorite too? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I play mostly like Borderlands two. I haven't really got I don't really got like pre sequel or even got the tales of Borderlands. I'm planning to. I just for now I'm just playing like Borderlands two. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to get out of that world. I know. I mean. And, and I still can't deliver the fucking mail! You know that mission to deliver the mail? Man, that mission. I mean, like, what level do you gotta be to beat that crap? Level one, that's it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty easy. Level one. Well, then I just suck. <laughs> anyway. That's disappointing. Um, that's really just level one? God. Oh. Does anybody have a question? Yes. Does, does your son watch any of the anime you, you voice him? He does not care. <laughs> uh, he has tried a few things, but he gets disinterested pretty quickly. He used to. He's more interested in watching the video game work that I've done, but I had to put the kibosh on that with some certain violence levels at a certain point. Although I think he might be getting old enough again for stuff like Borderlands 2. I just took him to see the, the remake of The Magnificent Seven. And he was all over, like he told me really early on when there was a talkie part that he was bored with that he needed to go pee and wanted us to get up. And I'm like, okay, just give me a second. And I was, you know, messing with my drink or whatever. And then I'm like, okay, you ready? And he's like, actually, Papa, I don't think I have to go. I'm like, what, it, what? And he's just, like, watching these guys twirl their guns around. Anyway, he's really into the Nerf blasters these days. And who can blame them? They're super badass. They didn't have toys like this when I was a kid. I sound like an old man on my yard. <laughs> man, I didn't have toys like that when I was a kid. These kids. Anyway. Anybody else have a question? Yes. So, I watched the Psycho Pass movie recently, and I thought you were really awesome in that. In light of that, what do you prefer voicing more heroes or villains? Um... Yes. <laughs> I, I would have said villains. See ya. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. Oh, you. You're very welcome. Um, I would have said villains probably when I was playing a lot of heroes, but now it's kind of a fair mix. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess I kind of petitioned against the young voiced heroes for a while after so many years of Shaoran, um, which was fun to do. And I, I dig when the heroes are. I don't know, like Yato, his schizophrenia and the fact that he can go back into this kind of, you know, his, his god of war zone. Because he is a god of war. And calamity. He's like a double god. <laughs> Some gods in that show are just single gods. <laughs> just like a god of one thing. But he's a god of a couple different things. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Yes, my friend. Do you ever play at least any board game besides video games? Oh, yeah. Like, have you played D&D? Yeah, of course. I want stories now. You want D&D stories? Yes. Well, most recent, I haven't played in a long time, but, um, I mean, a few years anyway. Um, last time I played, I was a, I was a barbarian named Corin. And I had to talk like this the whole time. Corin does not approve. Um, anyway, Corin was badass though. Corin slayed, literally, he slayed. Corin made stupid, stupid decisions and would come out ahead. Um, but mainly, this this all went down when I was way, way younger, and I had a buddy of mine and I. We would trade off and be in the the DM, and just make we'd make it up after a while. Which I know is not the way you're supposed to do it. But you know, after you've been through a few of those booklets, it's like, eh, let's make up our own. Anyway, I dig D&D. It's pretty cool. Anybody else dig D&D? Yeah, all right, I'm in the right place for this. Uh, anybody have another question? Yes? Did you audition for Yato, or was that assigned to you? No, I auditioned for Yato. 
I auditioned for, for most of them. Occasionally you'll audition uh, for particular roles, and then you'll end up with a different part in that show. But you always, well, you almost always have to audition. Yeah, well. I think he knew he wanted to cast me before he auditioned me, and then, you know, it was just a formality. <laughs> Not to say that in a snotty way. Yes, sir? Uh, because you say uh, Funimation's doing a lot more work these days, do yeah. you say it's easier for actors to find work than it was beforehand? Um, in a way, yeah. Uh, especially those that are local to the DFW Metroplex. But I think it's gotten somewhat more difficult for those of us who aren't based there because they need you either every week or every other week, and that can be difficult to do. Um, so, yes and no. There's distinctly more work. Um, but like I said, it's, there are contingencies that are beyond our control. Anybody else? Yes? So, Akira, you like it. Sub, old dub, or new dub? <laughs> new dub. New dub. I mean, I like the old dub, too. But I like all the dubs. I've watched the sub, too. I like to hear them. Um, but I, just, I think that the acting is distinctly better in the newer dub. I don't know if anybody agrees with me there, but... It also looks better, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool story, too. I wouldn't mind that power, although it seems like it's not very good for you. <laughs> like you're basically a, a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. Anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. Do you know about the pineapple apple pen? The pineapple what? <laughs> the pineapple apple pen. He put pen. my ear up to the mic like I'm going to hear that. <laughs> what was that about? The pineapple apple pen. The pineapple apple tin? Yeah. Apple I, I don't know what you're talking about. No. What does that sign say that that woman is holding up? Five minutes. All right. Cinco minutos. It's a song. It's a song. No, I don't know it. You, would you like to sing it for us? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me go ahead and find the soundtrack for it. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's pretty easy. You can easily just sing along. Should I stand up? Yeah, I'd okay. say so. Okay, alright, alright. So <laughs> huh? Maybe on the chair. On the chair? Off. Okay, yeah, so we can go. see you all right. project better. Alright, so this is how it goes, alright? You got... I have a pen. I have an apple. Uh, apple pen. That's the first lyric. And then there's the second one that goes... I have a pen. I have a pineapple. Uh, pineapple pen. <laughs> now the last verse... The last verse is the best part. Pineapple, no, apple pen, pineapple pen, uh, pen pineapple, apple pen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the video afterwards. <laughs> oh man, that's hard to follow. Man, I think we should call it. That's badass. <laughs> no, that'd be really, really, really good. Um, I'm gonna, hold on. <laughs> P P A P. Oh, and this honestly. Is wrong. What's that? Oh, you got a song for it too? Yeah. He's got the two. Is it playing? I hope it's playing. <laughs> That's pretty neat. You know, maybe you just play from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. <laughs> Yeah, you do. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Oh. Pineapple pen. Pineapple pen. Pineapple pen. Pineapple pen. I've got panels and stuff tomorrow too, and uh, I think I've got an autograph session. I could tell you the thing. Do you want to know the times of these things? Yes, All right. I have a little thing on my neck. Uh, so, 12 to 1 is the Funimation Broadcast Dub panel. That's going to be a serious panel. So, if you don't like serious panels, you should come to that. Um, <laughs> 2 to 3 p.m. is inside the voice actor's studio, which is apparently being headed up by the dude who did the opening ceremony. So. 
You should come to that too. Um, and uh, then I have autographs from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. And if you're a VIP, there's apparently something called a VIP Miet and Griet uh, from 5 to 6. I'm not sure what that is. The, the VIP Miet and Griet. Oh, v VIP. Just spell it out. Oh, oh you, you're supposed to spell, right? Yeah. You're supposed to say each letter, apparently. Uh, anyway, that's, that's tomorrow. But I hope to see you all at all those things. And it was great to hang out with you today. Pineapple pen. <laughs>